Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I recently stumbled upon some blog posts and videos talking about Cap Theorem in relation to microservices. So what I thought would be interesting is break this down as if I were asked this question in an interview, mainly because I thought the topic was really odd. You'll see why. So the question is, should you be concerned with Cap Theorem when designing a microservices architecture? I'll explain what Cap Theorem is for those unfamiliar, and then explain why this is such an odd question when I break all this down. So I think the real answer in all of this and what I'm about to do is give two definitions and break down those definitions, which really lead to my answer. So first thing we gotta do is actually talk about Cap Theorem by Eric Brewer. And Cap stands for Consistency, Availability, and Partition Tolerance. So the example I always see explaining Cap Theorem, which I will use, is related to ATMs. So let's say we have two ATMs and they communicate over the network. So if you go and try to deposit $100 at one ATM, it's gonna communicate over the network to the other ATM to tell it, okay, you just deposited $100 and let's keep both ATMs in sync about our account number and what our balance is. So when we have a network partition, which is basically saying we have these two nodes and they, we're gonna lose communication. That could be because one node is unavailable, there's a network issue, whatever the case may be. But when that happens, if we're choosing consistency, what we're saying is that when a user tries to deposit $100 and we then try to communicate to that other ATM, but you can't because there's a partition, if we're choosing consistency, then we're gonna tell the user, sorry, no, we're not gonna deposit that $100 because we need all the nodes available to accept our request to let them know that you're depositing that money. And we all have to have that same value of $100. We need consistency. Or instead, you can choose availability. So if there's a network partition and our user goes to deposit $100, if we have some network issue or something's not available, that other ATM, we can tell our user, yes, we will accept your $100. And then once that other ATM or node becomes available, we can reconcile that to catch it back up so we get to a consistent state. But we're choosing availability even when there is a network partition. So the complexity with availability is that if you have a network partition and both ATMs are online and available because you're choosing availability, that means if a user goes and deposits $100 to both ATMs and then tries to look at their balance, their balance is gonna show $100, but it should be $200. It's just that the two ATMs aren't communicating, so it doesn't know that total value. So there's that issue of you're not actually getting a consistent number of the system, the distributed system as a whole, and then two, there's a lot more complexities about how you're reconciling once they actually are able to communicate. So cap theorem, consistency, availability, partition tolerance. Now let's jump over to microservices. So this is a definition by Agent Cockroft, which is loosely coupled service oriented architecture with bounded context. I've highlighted two really important things, loosely coupled and bounded context. So first, the loosely coupled part of it is talking about coupling. And when I think about coupling, I think about also I think about cohesion and bounded context. So to me, coupling and cohesion are kind of the yin yang of software design. And I've had a video about this explaining coupling and how it can really guide your design. So the second piece of this is bounded context, which I'm gonna cover first actually in this statement. And that's kind of the cohesion part of this that I think about. So he also says, if you have to know too much about surrounding services, you don't have a bounded context. And I think a lot about this because the way I view bounded context in its definition by the language that you're using and the, the view of the, your users and what they care about, it really always comes down to having functional cohesion. So I like to say that a service is the authority of a set of business capabilities. Behind those capabilities are data, but data isn't the, the forefront of everything. You're creating cohesion around the functionality, the, the narrow functionality of what your users need to do for a particular use case or what their role is. So that part of it of talking about cohesion, I'm thinking about a bounded context and what a bounded context is, is a grouping, a highly cohesive group of functionality. So loosely coupled, what are loosely coupled services? Well, let's talk about coupling. So there's two ways to think about coupling. There's afferent coupling, which is denoted by CA, which the way I think about this is if you're thinking about a class, a module, whatever the case may be, is who depends on you, who depends on it. And then there's efferent coupling, which is denoted by CE, which is who do you depend on, meaning what other modules do you depend on? So to illustrate this in this diagram, 
There's warehouse sales and billing, which all have an afferent coupling of one because they all depend on catalog. And they have an efferent coupling of zero because nothing depends on them. And in the catalog is kind of the flip side of that, where it has an afferent coupling of zero because it depends on nothing, but it has an efferent coupling of three because the warehouse sales and billing depend on it. If you're creating a monolith, you could run some analysis tools in your code base to give you a diagram of this coupling. However, if you're creating microservices and communicating primarily through synchronous request response, like HTTP or gRPC, you're not loosely coupled. You're still just as tightly coupled as if you are in a monolith. Magically making HTTP calls to other services doesn't make you less coupled. In fact, I'd argue it's even worse because it's harder to troubleshoot with distributed tracing. You have latency issues to deal with, availability issues to deal with, network issues to deal with. This is pretty much the fallacies of distributed systems all over it when you have to make these uh, synchronous request response. So if I'm saying that RPC calls, whether they're HTTP, gRPC, whatever the case may be, if those are not loosely coupled, to me, they're tightly coupled, and more specifically, they're tightly temporally coupled, what's the alternative? Well, what is loose coupling as the definition is? So a loosely coupled system is one in which each of its components has or makes use of little or no knowledge of the definitions of other separate components. So this means that if we have our four different modules of CRM, sales, shipping, billing, they know little or nothing about each other. So how do you accomplish this? Well, specifically an event-driven architecture or a message-driven architecture, but I'm gonna explain EDA, event-driven architecture. So instead of having our modules communicate directly with each other and be coupled directly to each other, rather what we're doing is publishing events to a message broker that each other module will subscribe to of the messages that we're publishing so it can react to them. So one, we're not directly communicating to each other, but two, we're also removing the temporal aspect because all of this is gonna be asynchronous. You're just publishing messages to a message broker. You don't know whether, for example, if CRM is publishing a message about something occurring, let's say that a customer changed their status or their discount rate or their change their address, well, that is something that maybe billing cares about. Maybe shipping cares about it, but the CRM itself doesn't know that this is actually um, anything that anybody else cares about. It's just publishing events. So if you were to contrast this with my synchronous request response, say over HTTP, where we were making all these calls to different modules or to different services, instead with an event-driven architecture, you would do something like event choreography. So let's say that sales uh, publishes an event when an order is placed. So that publishes an order placed event. And then maybe billing cares about that because it needs to charge your actual customer account or their credit card or invoice them. So it's gonna consume that order placed event in billing. Once it's done that, and it's actually done its work in it that it's cared about, let's say it's order build, it publishes that event, that it's build our actual customer. Now, maybe at this point, the warehouse is the one that cares about that event because it needs to get everything ready to ship our particular order out. So it subscribes to that order build event. And then once it's done its work, maybe it's created a shipping label, it emits and publishes its event of a shipping label created, which ultimately sales consumes to maybe update its order status to say that it's the orders uh, in process and on its way and it's been approved for payment. So this is event choreography, and this is all asynchronous where no necessarily any um, service knows about the other. They're just doing the work, being reactive based off other things that are happening and then publishing their own events. So microservices are about events and capabilities. Services contain a set of capabilities. It's the authority of a set of capabilities and then the data behind it. It consumes events, it publishes events, but it doesn't communicate directly to other services. So you could say, that microservices are a characteristic of it is in an event-driven architecture. So I go back to this definition of microservices, loosely coupled, service-oriented architecture, event-driven with bounded context, with a set of capabilities per service. So when we go back to the very beginning of asking the question, what does CAP have to do with microservices? The answer is nothing. This question doesn't even make sense. So if we're talking about there being a concern about consistency and availability when there's a partition. Well, we can't have a partition because we're not communicating with other services. If we are sharing data with other services via events, 
Well, that's because we're asynchronous through event-driven architecture, we're gonna be eventually consistent. And availability is up to our own services. We're already gonna be highly available because we're not dependent on other services. If one other service is down, that doesn't make another service down. So the question of does cap theorem and should you care about cap theorem when talking or thinking about a microservices architecture? Well, if you're using the definition of a loosely coupled service oriented architecture with bounded context, the answer is no. Cap theorem doesn't even make sense as a whole of a distributed system. You could think about cap theorem in the sense of an individual service in concerning yourself with if my web tier can't communicate with my database, do I have everything else in a cache? So I want availability, or if the database is down, then I want consistency. You could think of it for an individual service, but if we're talking about a microservices architecture, no, this doesn't even make sense. So if you wanna create microservices, create loosely coupled service oriented architecture, which is inherently event and message driven and bounded context, which is about finding boundaries and a set of capabilities within that boundary. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.